Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to finish up our discussion on more on functions and their graphs. So if you remember from the previous two videos, we still have one learning objective remaining. We still need to find and simplify a function's difference quotient. So let's talk about a function's difference quotient. So we're going to need the difference quotient later in this chapter when we study the average rate of change of a function. It's going to come up in that section as well. So a difference quotient its name gives itself away. It's a difference of two different function notations, and it's also a quotient. So in other words, a ratio is also a word for quotient. It plays an important role in understanding the rate at which a function changes, and you might see this difference quotient if you take a calculus course in the future. So this is a definition of a difference quotient of a function. You do not need to memorize this formula. It'll be given on any quiz, homework, or exam. But the expression f of x plus h, subtract f of x, and that entire numerator is divided by h. This expression is called the difference quotient, and notice that your h cannot be zero because we cannot divide by zero, it would be undefined, and this is called the difference quotient of the function f. So you're using function notation in the numerator, you are taking the input to be x plus h in your function f, you're finding out what this answer is, then you're subtracting off what is the f of x, what is the original function, you find that answer, and then you divide everything by h at the end. So let's try example nine. We're going to find and simplify completely the difference quotient for a couple different functions. So number one, let's find the difference quotient for f of x equals negative three x plus four. And so this is a linear function that we have seen before. So let's start with the formula for the difference quotient. You have f of x plus h in the numerator. So let's find out what that answer is first. So if you remember, a couple videos ago, we've actually found f of x plus h. So this is nothing but understanding function notation. You're taking all the x's from your function and replacing them with x plus h in parentheses. So it's negative three times x plus h in parentheses, then plus four. So notice that you can distribute the negative three to both terms inside the parentheses, and you get negative three x, subtract three h, and then the fours outside the parentheses. So this is the first part of the difference quotient. This is f of x plus h. Notice that it's not just f of x, and then adding h at the end. It's not that. You have to replace all the x's with x plus h, and then simplify. So now the next part of the difference quotient is take this answer we just came up with, and subtract the original function. So f of x plus h, subtract f of x. So let's drop our answer that we had before, negative three x minus three h plus four. Now be very careful here. There's a minus sign in front of the entire function. So if you replace f of x, make sure it goes in parentheses. So subtract negative three x plus four. And we've seen this before. If there's a negative sign in front of a parenthesis, you have to distribute to both terms and it will change the sign. So negative three x, subtract three h plus four, then you'll have plus three x, subtract four for the numerator. So this is the entire numerator of the difference quotient. Now let's combine any like terms if there are any. Notice that there's a minus three x plus three x, well that's zero, and then you have four, subtract four, that's also zero. So there's only one term that is remaining, and notice that it is negative three h, and it has an h in it. That's important. When you calculate the numerator of a difference quotient, all the terms must have a h in common, and this one just has an h. So now the last step of a difference quotient. We found out the numerator, f of x plus h, subtract f of x, and now we need to divide this answer by h. So negative three h divided by h. Notice that this h that we had from the numerator is going to cancel out with the h in the denominator now. So the difference quotient is just negative three. You would never think that the answer would just be a number from the difference quotient when you're involving functions, but it is just negative three. So let's try a different function now. Number two, this time the function is going to be f of x equals negative two x squared, subtract x plus one. And so this is a quadratic function that we've seen before. 
So notice that quadratic functions have x to the second power. So let's approach this problem just like we did number one. We're going to find out the difference quotient by going in steps. So let's find out what f of x plus h is first. Now notice that this problem is going to take a little bit more algebra because we're dealing with a more complicated function. It has the highest power of x is 2 this time instead of just 1. So we take all the x's and replace them with x plus h in parentheses. So you have x plus h in parentheses squared. Subtract x plus h in parentheses. It's very important to make sure you have it in parentheses because of the minus sign in front. Then plus 1. So let's do a little bit of simplifying. Notice that x plus h squared means you have x plus h times itself. Let's write it out twice. You have x plus h times x plus h minus x plus h in parentheses plus 1. So remember, when you have x plus h times x plus h, you have four multiplications to do because you need to FOIL. You have first times first term. That will give us, don't forget about the negative 2 on the outside. So x times x is x squared. Outside is x times h. Inside is another x times h. And then the last is h times h or h squared. So make sure you have the negative 2 times this entire answer. Now, this negative sign we just seen before has to be distributed to the inside negative x and minus h, and then plus 1. And now distribute the negative 2. And then we'll see if we have any like terms we can combine. So you have negative 2x squared, subtract 2xh, subtract another 2xh, subtract 2h squared, and then the other terms. And then there are a couple like terms. You have negative 4xh's altogether. So it seems like we've done a lot of work, but we've only figured out just f of x plus h so far. And again, notice that f of x plus h doesn't mean you take the function and you add h to that function. It means you take all the x's and make them x plus h as your input, which is exactly what we got here. So now this next step, we need to take this answer, f of x plus h, and subtract the original function. So let's see what we get here. You have negative 2x squared, subtract 4xh minus 2h squared, subtract x, subtract h, plus 1. That's our answer from the f of x plus h part. Now subtract the original function. And we've seen before, the original function needs to go inside parentheses. So negative 2x squared minus x plus 1. And then the negative sign distributes to all three terms. So negative 2x squared, subtract 4xh, subtract 2h squared, subtract x, subtract h, plus 1, plus 2x squared, plus x, subtract 1. So it seems like we're getting more and more terms, but notice what happens just like in the last problem. There should be some terms that cancel out when you combine them. Negative 2x squared plus 2x squared. Well, that's 0. Minus x plus x. Those cancel out plus 1, minus 1 also cancel out. Now let's take a look. Every single term that's remaining that did not cancel out has an h in common. So you have a minus 4xh, a minus 2h squared, and there should be a minus h that's also lingering. So now there's one last step. We just found out the numerator of the difference quotient. Take this answer and divide by h, and you found out the entire difference quotient. So we have negative 4xh, subtract 2h squared, subtract h, and this entire numerator is divided by h. So the reason why there's an h that's important to have in every single term in the numerator is that you can now factor out the h in common from the numerator. So factor out the h, you have a minus 4x from the first term remaining, you have minus 2h from the second term. If you factor out an h from h, you'll have 1. So it'll be minus 1. So it's like reverse distributive property that we've just done. And this is divided by h. Now, you can cancel out the h's now because the numerator has been factored. It is in factored form. 
So the h divided by h is 1. And so what is remaining is called the difference quotient. Negative 4x, subtract 2h, subtract 1. And so that's the difference quotient for this function, f of x equals negative 2x squared, subtract x plus 1. So this gives you an idea of how to calculate the difference quotient for a couple different functions, a linear function and a quadratic function. So if you have any questions about any of the examples that we talked about in this video involving the difference quotient, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section involving difference quotients, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about slope of a line.